May June 2023, Paper 4, Variant 1. Question 1. A. Group 2 nitrates decompose when heated. Describe how thermal stability of the group 2 nitrate changes with the increasing proton number. Okay, so first you need to describe. Okay, of course, thermal stability increases down the group. Means um, from magnesium ion to the uh, calcium ion to strontium to barium ion. Uh, is uh, thermal stability is greater increases means hard to decompose okay so why hard to decompose because when down the group the ionic radius increases so the ionic radius of calcium ion is uh, larger than magnesium ion strontium is larger than uh, this calcium and magnesium okay so first you need to explain ionic radius increases Okay, therefore, less polarization of nitrate ion. Okay, so you have to understand when the group 2 cation is getting larger, so it's less able to distort the electron crowd of the nitrate. Okay, for example, magnesium ion is smallest in size and it has the greatest polarizing power it can distort the nitrate ions easily like this so therefore the NO bonds here easy to break and it can decompose easier so we say that when the ionic radius increases therefore less polarization of nitrate so means the nitrate still kind of intact not really uh, get polarized means electron crowd is not really distorted therefore the NO bond is uh, actually uh, stronger or less weakening okay, by this cation so therefore it's hard to decompose so you need to explain this a uh, few things for this part Part B, uh, this one is uh, what you learn in AS. Uh, write equation for decomposition of for the copper nitrate. So it's a uh, nitrate decomposed to form oxide, NO2, NO2. So just balance it. Okay, part C. Part C is the uh, complex uh, uh, formation. So first, the copper nitrate dissolves. To form solution A. So we know that it will form copper 2 solution uh, and it's a pale blue color. After that, uh, ammonia added to the this copper 2 solution, uh, it will form precipitate. Precipitate means uh, most likely it's from copper hydroxide. And for the copper hydroxide, you can uh, give this or you can give this uh, nowadays uh, this is the better answer uh, Cu with 4H2O and 2OH okay so this is the precipitates that form when a small amount of ammonia added after that when the excess ammonia added so you form solution C so uh, when they ask equation, you must know how to give the equation. So the equation is like this because it's from the precipitate, now ammonia added. So you form this complex. The copper with 4 ammonia and 2 H2O, this is the octahedral complex. Okay, of course, you remove the <coughs> uh, H2O, 2 H2O and 2 hydroxide from the previous precipitate okay so now if let's say not ammonia added but we add the uh, excess concentrated HCl then it will form another complex so the chloride will form complex with the copper ion okay and you form this CuCl42 negative 
This is the tetrahedral complex, yellow color. And of course, you need to give the equation when they asked. Okay, so start from the precipitate B here with the chloride. So you will form this solution. And of course, 4H2O and 2OH will be substituted. Right. So these are the few equations that you should give when they asked. Okay, now let's continue with this uh, table. Um, <clears throat> so what is A again? A is this solution A is the okay, formula of the copper containing species. So this is the copper which is surrounded by six water molecules. Also, this is the octahedral complex. And of course, it's pale blue. For B, which is the precipitate we discussed. So you can give this or this. Okay, of course, it's a pure blue precipitate as well. Okay, so for Sorensen C, this one. So it will be copper with 4 ammonia and 2 H2O. Remember the charge, so it's 2 positive. Because the uh, ammonia and the H2O, they are both neutral. And the color of the solution, you should know that, is dark blue. And <clears throat> for D, I already told you, is the copper with 4 uh, chlorine so CuCl4 2 negative and the color is the yellow color solution okay, EDTA 4 negative is a polydentate ligand explain what it means by polydentate ligand uh, so this one's very easy and straightforward so the species that donates more than 2 lone pair to form dative bonds to the metal ion. Right. So, for example, uh, ligand means uh, whenever the species, for example, um, let's say the chlorine, this one. So, <clears throat> the chloride here is has a few lone pair. So, the chloride able to form dative bond with the copper ion. Uh, so, this is the uh, dative bonds means and uh, <clears throat> and this is the uh, uh, ligand right the correct just now is a ligand EDTA also a ligand okay so now uh, group 2 metal ions can form complexes similar to those uh, of transition elements a solution of EDTA4 negative is added uh, to water containing uh, calcium uh, H2O6 2 positive and form new complex so it means the calcium with EDTA now and this is the equilibrium that form so we know that one mole of the complex uh, ion of calcium will react with one mole of EDTA so this is the ligand circle the structure of EDTA um, in the this figure 1.2 the six atoms that form the bonds with metal ion okay so we need to find out the donor atom in this EDTA so there will be six donor atoms there okay, so this oxide and this oxide this oxide this oxide so all these will donate a lone pair to form a dative bond with the calcium ion and there, there are another two lone pair from this nitrogen and from this nitrogen so this nitrogen has one lone pair this nitrogen has another lone pair also can form dative bond with the calcium so just circle these six atoms okay part three calcium ions and the EDT, uh, calcium EDTA, so these two complex, they have the coordination numbers of six. Explain what it means by coordination number, very easy. Uh, it's referred to the numbers of dative bond or coordinate bonds that form. So means, um, okay, so for this one, because EDTA, we know that it has one, two, three, four, five, six donor atom. It can form six dative bond means it will have six coordination number. 
right? So it's just the numbers of coordinate bonds that form. Okay, part four. <clears throat> so the uh, complex uh, of the calcium, chromium, iron, and the lead complex, and its care step given. So from here, we know that the largest care step is this one, the iron with the EDTA. So this one, we know that is the most stable complex among all this. So because the care step is highest. And of course, the least stable is uh, this one, the calcium with EDTA complex. Okay, so we just based on the value, we know which one is more stable. Larger value is more stable. Okay, so now, um, okay, state the type of reaction when the calcium EDTA reacts with the uh, chromium, iron, and the lead to solution. So this one is very easy uh, because um, when the calcium EDTA, this one, added to these three solutions, then the EDTA inside this complex ion will exchange with the water inside this solution. Okay, initially the chromium, iron and the lead solution, all the ligand they are H2O only. So whenever there is a presence of EDTA, so EDTA will substitute this H2O and form the new complex, okay, which are this complex. Of course, this one will form the most. Okay, state the type of reaction, very easy. Uh, because EDTA exchange with the H2O ligand, so we just call it as ligand exchange. Okay, deduce the relative concentration of the uh, this uh, chromium EDTA iron EDTA and the lead EDTA. So this one we just based on the value. Just now I told you already, uh, the, the, this iron EDTA, so it's the uh, highest concentration, is formed more, more than others. Followed by the chromium. Chromium is, uh, okay, is still high but it's not higher than this iron, so it's second. And the lead okay, is the lowest concentration. Okay, so just explain uh, using the k step value. k step is uh, this, okay, of uh, this iron EDTA is highest. Okay, part E is just a calculation. Um, so we need to find the numbers of uh, this water of crystallization uh, in the ionic salt. Okay, so two, 0 0.2 Five five gram of hydrated chromium three sulfate dissolved in water and make up to hundred cm cube. Okay, after that we just take twenty five cm cube from this solution uh, to titrate with the EDTA solution. So after titration, we know that twenty six point two cm cube of zero point zero zero eight mole per dm cube EDTA used. Okay, so from this equation we know that the <clears throat> Mole ratio between the this chromium uh, complex ion and EDTA is one to one ratio. Okay, so first we need to find the moles of chromium in the twenty five cm cube that used. So we know that since it's one to one mole ratio, the moles of chromium three in twenty five cm cube equal to the mole of the EDTA used. So we just use mv over thousand here. So we find the mole of EDTA used for the titration. And we have to, uh, later we have to times four because we need to find the total amount in 100 cm cube. So just times four, we get the total amount uh, in the 100 cm cube of the chromium tree solution. Okay, after that, um, you have to understand one mole, this one, one mole of the salt, it will form two moles of chromium 3. So therefore, the most of the salt must be half of the chromium 3 ions that calculated just now. So use the mole over 2, so you get this mole. So this is the mole of the 
salt, hydrated salt that used. Okay, and after that, use the mass that dissolved over the mold of the hydrated salt. You get the molar mass of the hydrated salt. Okay, so to find the moles of water of crystallization, you use the uh, molar mass of the hydrated salt minus anhydrous salt, which is 392.3. Okay, after that, over 18, you get chuffed. So the mo uh, moles of water of crystallization is chuffed. Okay, the last part. A solution of chromium and the solution of uh, iron 3 have different colors. Explain why two complexes have different colors. Uh, colors for the transition elements is because of the, the delta E between the uh, non-degenerate orbitals, D orbitals. So difference um, uh, delta E, it will give different uh, uh, color. Okay, so first you need to explain because delta E between the non-degenerate D orbitals of the chromium tree and iron tree, okay, they are different. And after that, they would absorb different frequency of light. When different frequency of light uh, being absorbed, we'll see different complementary color. So this is how uh, we get different color because of this. Okay, remember, non-degenerate orbitals means uh, those orbitals, they are not at the same energy level because there will be a DD splitting for these transition elements. Okay, so that's all. Thank you.